Today's regatta is as much a social experiment as it is a race. A clash of character. Old money versus no money at all. Six boats of want-tos against one filled with have-tos. And these nine working-class boys arrive from the American West on the shoulders of a country that sees itself in their determined young faces. Sees their struggles, their grit, their spirit. And they've claimed the Husky Clipper as their own. The boys in the boat were strong, tough kids, but they were poor and hungry. They're rowing because it was the only way they could stay in college. Well, what's that about making some money? Yeah, the rowing team. You're on, you get a part-time job included, each place to live. All you gotta do is make the team. I'm Coach Ulbrichson. Now, you're all here because we're looking for the eight most qualified young men to fill out JV boat. Row! Row! There's basically three major races, and we knew that the first one has to be a surprise, and then the third one has to be a whole other level. The second race was about grit. Kepsi Regatta is always the most important race of the season. It was about these guys digging down deep, these guys who really had nothing. It's also a race that the University of Washington has not won in almost two decades. The importance of this race is that it is the qualifying race to get into the Olympics. But we have a boat that I believe could change all that. That boat is our junior boat. Have you lost your mind? Rowing, particularly in the 1920s, was one of the most attended sports in the United States. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people would go to these races. Ulrichsen puts the JV boat ahead of the varsity team because they're fast. They're a faster boat, and it's all about winning. My job to put the best boat in the world. Your water, job? Man. I pay for your job. These jobs on the line, it's a depression. All those coaches, but if they don't win, they're going to lose the job. You send a boat full of kids down there, and they trip up, you're sticking your neck way out there. But if he loses, he made the wrong choice. The school doesn't go to the Olympics. The stakes for him are really, really high. But he takes that risk because these young guys are hungrier. Go! Up until the Poughkeepsie race, Joe's just going through the motions. Albrechtson kicks him out of the boat because his head's spinning and he's not concentrating, he's not being a team member. The thing about rowing is that everybody has to be in sync. You, know, you have to row as one. All right, here we go, boys. And it starts, you know, as a fair. I think everybody's happy. There's a lot of people enjoying a lovely weekend by the water. Find your place by the river or the radio. We're hearing the radio announcer and we're seeing the seriousness of our guys. I think that makes us as an audience think, can they do it this time? Cheer for guts and heart and brawn to beat privilege and prestige to the finish line today. Martin and Matt and George and me, and then with the editing and the music, you know, we had to create basically out of whole cloth this sequence. The starting gun is up, oars to front stops. Nearly 100,000 spectators hold their breath in anticipation. All the other races are basically on lakes, and this was on a river, so we wanted to give it that scope, that feeling, and then size. This is also the longest race in distance, so we had to build that length. We shot it on a water reservoir near Heathrow Airport. I'm not exaggerating. Every minute, a jumbo jet would take off and fly so right Grant up. would be like, you know, uh, all right, this is uh, British Air going to Bali. Go. And we'd shoot in between. We have like a maybe 30 second window, literally, that we could do dialogue between big, loud planes. Fortunately, a lot of that stuff didn't have dialogue. To create Hudson River around that was, was a big challenge. There is nothing around it. There is everything that you see on that screen didn't exist. I did the second unit on the film, so I, I did that shot. Oh yeah, all the foreground stuff is there, but once the camera rises up, it's all fake. It's just so much fun. That was a race where thousands of people were watching and they had trains along the coastline where people could travel with the teams and then watch them. And we shot everything on the train on a parking lot near the studio. We built two cars and green screen and then background extras and our cast and then visual effects takes that and does their magic to it. It's all an illusion because we couldn't find any other place to shoot it, quite frankly. I'd say the biggest challenge in the making of the film, from my perspective, and I know from George's perspective, and I think from Martin's perspective too, was trying to make rowing 
as exciting as possible. Cal still showing no signs of slowing down. Washington is getting his first taste of competition, something Coach Albrechtson can hope to build on. As we spent weeks on the water before we started filming. It took about a week to sort of figure out how to shoot the boats, like how to get to the right place to feel right. I got to understand what the ins and outs of the actual rowing entail. For the first race, you know, we would start out here, and the second race, we would be here. When you're far back, nothing looks fast. It's hard to get close. And even if you get close, you know, the, the rowers, the faces constantly move. Ten more! <laughs> Shoulders down! A wide shot lets everybody know where the geography is. On that Poughkeepsie race, we used drones. But you had to find ways to make it dynamic. I think we had three camera boats, plus two cameras for the second unit. We had one strong boat with a super techno crane on and a camera on that. That had a strong wake, so if we were to overtake with that boat another rowing boat, we would sink it. We're moving in closer to make it tighter and closer as you got in, because now we know them. Bolts out in front and start to tire, and you'll just begin to start. Shooting on water, in my experience, is the most challenging thing that I've ever done as a filmmaker. Everything's slowed down. I mean, I did Perfect Storm. I knew what I was getting into. When we lined up the Poughkeepsie race, there was a little bit of wind. Then the boats would just not be in position. It's because there's a current, so the boats all start moving around, and they're not in straight lines. A lot of it is just getting the guys to row in sync and shooting the shit out of it. We have a lot of cameras, a lot of angles. All right, give me 10 big ones for all of us to go! <laughs> We storyboarded the whole thing. If you look at our storyboards, there's, they match the action stuff exactly the way we drew it up. This is probably the most challenging sequence for the actors in the boat. It required the most rowing. It's a really physically demanding part for all these guys. And they're just sitting in the middle of a reservoir in these eight-man boats. It's cold, it's windy. Give me three big ones to finish them! I mean, there's only so much that you can ask of them without, you know, breaking them. Wet and cold, best part of the day, right here. We shot it over five days. And then getting into the edit and having Tanya then take all that, it's like a, almost like a puzzle, really, and putting it all together. Nearly 100,000 spectators hold their breath in anticipation. A hush falling over Crumb Elbow. Washington Huskies are now rowing against the seniors of Cal. Huskies are the only junior boat in the competition. Give me a nice easy 28. Rolling with Dawn, eat and through. These seven finely trained crews are churning the waters of the upper Hudson in the supreme rowing test of power, speed, and coordination. We had three big races, and we didn't want them to feel exactly the same, even though this team, their thing was kind of coming from behind. Oh! Push! Keeping the boats in the right order, kind of telling the right story as to who was winning at the beginning, who were, who were neck and neck throughout the race. Just passing the halfway point and Washington is surging. Oh, you better be right, Mark. We went through each one. We sort of found which race needed what. And it required a, a style of editing that I'm not used to as well. A lot of the close-ups of the oars in the water and the oar locks and, you know, just textural detailed shots of hands or close-ups on the guys. It adds the ferociousness, the nature of the race. Washington is pulling ahead! 20 more strokes! Come on. We just tried to make things ha have a little chaos and a, and a lot more energy. A much faster pace of cutting. 50 more! We wanted to make sure we were using an angle that featured the train in the background. The Poughkeepsie Regatta, today's regatta, is the greatest one-day rowing event in America. Coaches like Kai Ebright, Rusty Callow, and Al Ulbrichsen are not only hoping for a win, but a chance to compete in Berlin. There's going to be thousands of people lining that shoreline. Oh, that pays, Bobby. With regard to the Poughkeepsie race, we were able to create not only the, the race, but I think we, we nailed those story points. Washington has fallen back to last place, four lengths behind the leaders. Now, Bobby. Six. The thing about Bobby Mock is he gets the job done. What's he doing? It has to be now. Come on, boys. Wait for it. The coach gives him a little talk, and then he does the opposite. Wait for it. <sighs> All right, Don, give me 36. Go. Well, he's just having a great time. He has no doubt that he's going to be able to get them to muscle past and win. And here they come. Right. Looking for fresh water, Bobby Mock is steering right into Syracuse's lane. By the time we get to the Poughkeepsie race, 
he really takes it to the point where you think there's absolutely no way that they're going to be able to make this work. Yeah. Get off us! I go to hell, Syracuse! What the hell is that? Washington is passing Syracuse, and with a mile and a half behind them, teams are falling away, but no one is gaining on California and Navy. Oh boy. You can't help but get excited when we cut back to the girls at the college and they're sitting by the radio. And at the quarter mark, we've got California, Penn and Navy out in front with a half boat lead on the rest of the field. A shout out to Mark Smith who wrote all these beautiful little beats in there. You get the sense that Elbrickson and his wife have a great relationship, but that she's got to poke the bear every once in a while. Oh, I do love your smile. You should do it more often. These sequences without score would be nothing. Where you'll really see the difference is when we do a temp score, and then you see his score, you know, that's tied directly to the story. From the beginning, I tried to, with the help of the images, make the audience feel that these eight guys, they're superheroes. Everybody else tires, and they just get stronger. When they start rowing, I start to pulse of grooving. They found their pace, the fluidity of their movements. winning theme that will develop. I start installing this theme as the rowing team gets closer to the finish line. Ten more! <laughs> and they will surpass everybody because they are actually not only very strong individually, but together they're like the force that you can't stop. Here we go, boys! Give me 35! Let's show them what we got! You really feel like you get to know these people. You really feel the camaraderie that's built with this team and the struggle that they went through. The average human body is just not meant for such things. It's just not capable of such things. But average, not gonna get a seat on my boat. If I look back at George's film, he likes to give to the audience a journey through the life of one or few ensemble of people who will have to go over hurdles, challenge themselves, and show heroism and team effort. The show Ulbrichsen was in this book. Ready? All of it builds a sequence in a, in, a, in a film that hopefully transports the audience to a place that they've never been before. <laughs> When you're in the boat with those guys working so hard, you believe them. As one, as one. It's a Cinderella story. It's chariots, it's Rocky. We have 100,000 race fans gathered here for what is sure to be another maritime battle, the likes of which we haven't seen since New Orleans. This film reminds us that we are all in this together. It's a story that is uh, unbelievable and it just tears at your heart. Joe, your dad gave up on you, he quit on you. But it seems to me you're not him. This was just about feeling good about ourselves, which is a nice thing to do. Washington has picked up the pace. Bobby Mock finally getting his crew in this race. The Huskies sweeping by Cornell, headed for Penn and Columbia. Navy and Cal still ahead by four lengths. Let's go! Washington is quickly gaining on Columbia's Lions. Better not be too late. The Husky Clipper muscles by Columbia and into third place. Now, give me 10 more for Volker. With 400 meters to go, here comes Washington. <laughs> Washington has taken second place. Do they have enough left to catch Cal? Right, move. Come on, boy. Come on. You got this, man. Look at Washington. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Can the Huskies do it? Can they do it? Give me ten big ones for all the people who didn't believe in you. Go! Washington is passing Cal! Eight, two, 
With 100 meters to go, Washington is going to do it! Washington is going to do it! Eyes up! Come on! 